Hi, hallo, grüezi. Today I want to do something I've never done before on my channel, a review of a printer. Hashtag not sponsored. I already know exactly what you're going to say. There is already a million reviews from a thousand different creators on the Bamboo Lab H2D. So why should I listen to this other random guy who is clearly a Bamboo Lab fanboy and prints on nothing else than the Bamboo Lab itself? So what does give me a unique perspective and a unique knowledge about technology and especially FDM 3D printing technology overall? So fair questions, I would say. And to that, I have to say, I have nothing to answer on that. I think you got the message. So let's dive right in into the new flagship of Bamboo Lab, the Bamboo Lab H2D. It's out now for about two months. I've printed a lot with it already. I have the one of the first machines in Switzerland actually for work purposes and I have to say I am in love with this printer. What you can already see, that does not look like a typical 3D printer anymore. This looks like a finished refined product. Everything is sleek. Everything is automated. Everything is just nice and beautiful. The engineering on this is top-notch quality. And for a price, then with other brands, you don't even get their starter printers, let alone industrial ones. But what I really, really like about this printer is its build quality. So as you can see, it uses linear bearings instead of the carbon rods that the X1 Carbon did. And one thing I really like about this one is they don't have a recessed base anymore. So 3D printing, especially when filament switching, can get messy like hell. And here you can simply clean it out. That's just one of the many things I like about the engineering. Everything feels high quality. What should be made out of metal is made out of metal. And what can be made out of plastic is made out of plastic, but not 3D printed plastic. I can't stress that enough that I hate if 3D printer manufacturers 3D print their 3D printers. 3D printing is a nice technology and all, but it does not have the quality or the tolerances needed for a machine that should move super accurately to produce accurate parts. Because we're already losing a lot of uh, quality over the melting of the plastic and the retraction of the plastic by cooling. Let's address the elephant in the room. The one thing that makes this printer special, and no, I'm not talking about the laser cutting plug-in or the foil cutting plug-in you can buy for this. I actually didn't buy it. I think it's a, it's a play, it's a game. It's like a bad idea. It's not really good because I don't want to laser cut in the same area that I 3D print because of all the ooze and goo I produce and it will stick everywhere and it will clock up shit. I am talking about dual extrusion. So that's the one thing I was always missing from the X1 Carbon was dual nozzle printing. Why is dual extrusion better than a single extruder with like the switch with the AMS system and stuff like that? Simply because, for example, you want to combine TPU and PLA. TPU and PLA have vastly different melting properties and it's hard to perch out one filament with the other. And also you can't put TPU in an AMS system, so it's really hard to even switch. And this TPU for AMS, we are not talking about. That material is absolute crap. So here we have two nozzles that actually one nozzle can retract. And they even thought of giving it a little ooze shield. Because even if you retract, the material or the nozzle still has some residual heat and the material will start to drop out of the not used nozzle and it will drop onto your part. And so they solved that with this movable ooze shield that will basically switch from one nozzle to the other. Other than that, it is a pretty standard dual extruder with like one gear that changes direction and it basically changes pressure on the wheel. I guess this was normally a patent by Stratasys, but I guess this patent ended now. That's why they could do it. What I also like about the new hat is first of all, it has a huge, really, really sturdy linear bearing. So it still has the Bamboo Lab signature printing speed. It's super fast, it's super accurate. 
And one really surprising thing about this printer is it is dead silence. So even the X1 Carbon with the vibration control on is like way louder than this thing. You can print here on 120% and the Carbon with just like 50% speed will be louder. So this one is actually something you can put at home. It has, of course, the signature magnetic build plate, bamboo textured plate. And one thing I am in love with is the cutting of the filament, because you can still use an AMS system in this printer. This AMS system looks a little bit like the old AMS system, but it is the new AMS2 Pro. And so what is special about this one, it now includes an active dryer. So you can plug that into a power source and it will actively dry your filaments out, which is awesome if you work with like PETG, TPU, or even PVA. Dual nozzle extrusion again enables you to PVA support your part. And of course, because of the dual nozzle switching in just two colors will be way faster than like pooping it out. It still has the signature poop shoot on the back for switching materials in one nozzle. But if you're not using that, it will just simply switch nozzles very fast. You can do dual prints, dual material prints, and so on. Another thing I really like, I already said it, is the cutting of the filament. And for that, on the back, we have these little levers that come out when the nozzle goes into a specific position to cut and then go away. So you can still use the whole printing bed. One thing that needs to be said is that you have an area left and right of the print bed that can only be reached by one nozzle. Also, Bamboo Lab increased the printing size finally to 350 by 320 by 325 millimeters. There's one more thing. This machine now featured active temperature chamber control. So we are not just having an auxiliary fan like normal. We now have a temperature control heated auxiliary fan. You remember, if you print with a textured plate, the PLA, it always tells you to open up the top or the front to let air circulate because otherwise it gets too hot. So this printer actually takes care of this itself. It has a motorized vent on the front and a motorized vent on the back. And it also features an active carbon filter in the back where it can like filter out, for example, ABS print. I tested it, the smell is gone. I really love this progress bar up here. So this is an LED, you see it flashing right now. It shows you if it's in error mode, it will be red. And it also shows you a bar loading while you print. So you can physically see, just look at your printer and from far away, see how far your print is already gone. On the back here, on the classic poop shoot, we have a new feature, this little metal plate. So what happened to me a lot of times is when I changed material, the poop would stick to the nozzle itself and would be dragged out of the poop shoot and just thrown onto my print and it messed up some prints for me. This one actually captures whatever is extruded and it will then basically pull it back and really cut it off. And they also changed their design of the cleaner. It's now a little rubber pad where the nozzle really aggressively rubs on. So I am uh, like, I am looking forward to see how long that will actually hold on. I'm not convinced in that one so much. They also got rid of their requirement for a micro SD card, which I personally really hated. And they added a normal USB port, which I think is cool because now I can use the millions and millions of USB sticks I have at home to simply bring data here if I don't use the cloud or to film my time lapses. The machine, of course, features a camera again, but not only do we have the camera filming the part, we also now have a camera behind the nozzle down here. And so this camera is here for the computer vision to actually see if we have a filament pile up or oozing or anything. So this takes care of everything that happens down here. In addition, we still have the signature of Bamboo Lab as well, the LiDAR sensor. They, of course, updated their software completely for this printer, which was necessary because now you can do multi-material print. And I really like the software update. Everything got a little bit sleeker and easier to handle and everything looks a little nicer, if you get what I mean. Cool thing as well, this printer can now put two AMS systems onto one printer without the need of any additional piece you need to buy. You know, in the X1 Carbons, if you want to have multiples, you had to buy these like switches basically, where the material is put together out of two AMS systems. And here, 
you can simply plug in two AMS systems, one to each nozzle. If you only have one, like I do, you have this side spool holder that uh, feeds the second material into the second printhead. So if you want to use TPU, you have to plug out the hose here, put it into another uh, port, and then you feed directly to it. I think that was made to decrease the length of PTFE tubing the TPU has to go through, because we know TPU loves to stick to PTFE tubes. Everything else is pretty much like in the X1 Carbon. The build quality is amazing. There is one feature that is not common in consumer level printers because this machine is still only, and I couldn't believe it myself, two and a half thousand francs in Switzerland, including the AMS2 Pro system, which is like, this price is ridiculous. But there is one feature that you basically only use if you're an industrial user. And in industrial machines, there is a law, as, at least here in Europe, that every machine has to have an emergency stop button. And the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon so far did not fulfill that requirement. And like most companies help themselves by putting an emergency stop into the power cord itself. But this machine now features this little plug. You can see there is a key printed on it. If I pull that, the machine will not work. It will shut down. And this is actually meant to attach an industrial emergency stop button that can then be placed besides the printer. So if somebody reaches in and the nozzle pinches him, he can push it and all motors go off. But I think that's also a really cool feature for home use. Just imagine like you are 3D printing enthusiast, you buy one of those machines, you place it somewhere home and you have kids and you don't want your kids to play around with the printer for whatever reason, safety concerns, or you just want to have it to yourself. You can simply take this key out and hide it somewhere, take it with you or whatever, and then plug it back in and the machine starts up. Most people don't have industrial 3D printers at home. That's why I'm excited to announce our partnership with one of the most competitively priced and high quality manufacturers out there, PCBWay. PCBWay is very renowned for their PCB manufacturing capabilities. They also offer industrial grade 3D printing and with worldwide shipping, it will show up within days on your doorstep. So now let's talk about the two most important things when it comes to a 3D printer for home or hobby use. Print quality and reliability. So printing quality wise, the layer lines are super even. The sides of the walls show nearly no layer lines anymore. And I think that's partly because they added some, I mean, the table is wobbling, but they added some absorbing feet. That's really cool. So this printer looks like it will destroy itself any second. It shakes violently, but that's actually a feature, not a bug. So with this, because we have a very heavy print head now, they take away some of the vibration. And I think that's the reason as well why they've gone for linear uh, rails and real bearings now instead of like carbon tubes or whatever. When it comes to reliability, I printed a lot with this printer now. I had the occasional print fail on like a part that had like three materials and like hundreds and hundreds of switches, but they were always minor. They never destroyed my print. So a few times it saw a nozzle clock or like something that got dragged by the nozzle where it didn't have it. So maybe some kind of weird reflection or whatever at the start of a print. And I got it under control pretty fast. It was nothing. I just hit restart, 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 and then it continued. Another downside of this printer, which I personally don't like so much, is it again has the Bamboo Lab standard poop shoot back here. And then you have to print this chute to the side where you can then empty it out. And as you saw in my home setup, maybe I have my printer inside of my wardrobe and I don't have sides. Uh, like space left and right to put a poop shoot there. So I don't like that stuff is going on back here. Also, I think the positioning of the spool again is very weirdly done. It's like all the way back here and it's a big machine. So if you're working and you have to put a material back here, you have to either fiddle it with one arm or you to lean around if you have like a wall or something here. I mean, of course, on this table, I can just walk around and use it. Ah, but I still would like to have this maybe on the top or more up front where I can reach it more easily. Uh, the AMS system is still a thing that like I like that it enables me to print multiple colors with like the normal color switching. And by the way, the second one is way faster. 
it doesn't take ages to spool up or spool back and it updates a little bit faster but it's still an AMS system it's noisy it's slow the material change takes ages so with a two colored print you are way faster with a three or four colored print eh, it depends on how you put the materials but that's actually an upside of the software I want to talk about is that the software itself now has different modes so in the default mode it will always try to save as much material and switches as possible and then you can also like put the materials yourself or use whatever is on the printer so for example I have a translucent a silver and a black on here and I can just force my slicer to use it in that configuration no matter what I print but I can also tell him do the best thing for material safe and time safe and it will actually tell me where to place stuff which I think is also a really cool feature that it basically supports you in slicing one feature I did not like so much in the X1 Carbon is how it does the nozzle cleaning. So it had this little latch on the back of your uh, build plate where it just rubbed back and forth your um, nozzle. And like the rough surface of the build plate was gone pretty fast. And after that, it was just some smearing going on because after all that's just brass Bruh. here, this surface. So now they feature a little stainless steel grit back here where the nozzle actually gets cleaned and it has through holes. So it really grabs material on it. So nozzle cleanliness is way better in this printer than in the X1 Carbon. Of course, please always take reviews like that with a grain of salt. I'm working with this printer now for like one and a half to two months. I printed a lot on it. It's constantly in use. My colleagues use it, my students use it, but of course, this is not a long-term review in the classical sense. With X1 Carbon, I now have printers that printed two years, basically 24 seven. On the weekends, overnight, all the time, I have an X1 Carbon with thousands of print hours and it did not break down once. So reliability-wise on the X1 Carbons, I have proof. And here I can only see the engineering, but what I see, I really like. So if you have anything to add to my review or maybe something you want to know, just write it down in the comments. I always read all your comments, but I'm not always answering all of them because that would be way too much. I have a life. <laughs> okay. If you want to know something specific or if I did miss anything, write it down in the comments down below. Also, let me know if re review videos like that are something that you like that you maybe want to see more. I have access to most of the newest printers out there. And I also have a lot of industrial printers like Peak printers, SLA printers, Polyjets and stuff like that. I could do reviews or informational videos on that. Let me know if you want to see that. And other than that, see you next time. Let's dive right in into the new Bamboo Ledge A. Bamboo Ledge. <laughs> so let's do it again. Where I even used this printer as well. And I don't worry, just walk through. <laughs> and other than that, see you next time. Cut. Okay. You know what I really don't get is like this fucking button. I don't know what this does. Like the X1 Carbon even they have like two of them and one of them at least shut off the, the, the screen, but like nothing. Like,